So if the labels are pre-printed or formatted to ask you to fill in the locality, the collector, etc., and it has an underline for you to hand write in that collector or type write that collector's name into the line, the OCR engine uh, has trouble reading it. So you may have to manually transcribe those. And that's when you open up the natural language processing software that is Salix. Salix is a product um, of a number of grants led by some botanists at the uh, Arizona State University. They're botanists slash programmers. And so they needed something that would allow them to efficiently and quickly capture specimen data for 60,000 specimens that are um, Latin-based, um, they're Latin labels. I don't know which country specifically. So they designed this program. And it's just an executable file. We saved this folder to the <coughs> thumb drive, so each of you can have a copy and play around with it in your free time, or maybe during one of the afternoons we can play around with it. But you open up the Salix folder, and you find the exec executable file, and you open it. Right now, it only works for plant labels because of the, the dictionaries and the authority files that are embedded within it. But it's very possible that if any of you wanted to contact um, the people who wrote the software program, they could teach you how to create authority files for insects or for whatever is your organismal group and save them in the proper place and have the program read them. I'm sure it's not impossible. So one of the first things you do when you, when you turn it on, it asks you who's, who's entering the data. And in this case, it's Kim. If it's not me, then you can create any number of users. And that way, it allows you to keep track of who's entering data how. And you can troubleshoot if someone's having problems understanding the difference between different label information, um, you can deal with them ind individually. So I'll go with me. OK. Before we get started with seeing how the program actually parses data, I want to show you how you can see based on what it's being informed. So one of the things is the list of countries. As I mentioned before, they did this for a very specific project with a very specific geographic scope. So the number of countries that are listed in the country list is in no way exhaustive. Um, but it, you're welcome to add countries. So you can right click and add. I don't think Ghana's in the list. So we could add Ghana. And then you could add every primary and secondary political division for each country, depending on what are your labels that you're working on. And then you press Save. Another item to notice, if you wanted, you could include the, the minimum or the northernmost and southernmost geographic coordinates for those political subdivisions to help the program to know whether or not um, it's understanding the information correctly. So you can have the eastern and western most, most border coordinates for the, the division as well as the upper and, or northern and southern. Another thing to, to keep in mind, um, the field definitions. So we have here a number of what are considered Darwin core fields, though they're not named as such in the user interface. Not every Darwin core field that you might want to capture is here. Um, but as Melissa talked about, the program has a way of reading the text and finding those, those clues within the text that help it to know collector from determiner from author. And where you see those clues is under field definitions. So we see here every field that you might have, that you might want to populate. You can tell it to, to warn you if that field is empty. So if you know you want a barcode in every one of those, um, if you want a barcode captured for any, every one of those images, you can set it to warn you that there's no barcode. And you, in order to change any one of these, double click or right click. So you can preserve, warn, or add a new field. And then over here, we see all of the, the clues that help it to know what's plant description, what's elevation, what's an herbarium, what would help it to know what is the taxonomic determination. Here, 
And you can see also the difference between words that start with or words that contain. So it knows flower will be within a string, not necessarily the first word of a, of a string. So you can add to that list. So as you're, as you're um, and not only can you add, it learns. So as you process more labels, it becomes more informed about the types of labels that you're working with. That's a really nice feature. And then finally, another one you want to pay attention to is how do you want to export this data that you've captured? It's of no use to you in the, the Salix interface. You need it into a format that you can import to your database. And that's where you select, you select what fields and in what format. So you can see here the names of the fields as you see them in the interface next to the Darwin Core named fields. And these that are not selected are not Darwin Core. And then I choose to export as Darwin Core comma separated values. It's easy to import into another database. So once you're happy with all of the fields, then you name the table into which you'll save your data. So you have to anticipate all of the fields that might be on any of the labels. You can update the field as you go along. So in the beginning, you'll have to keep teaching it, keep teaching it, but there will reach a point where it's faster um, to do this than to manually type. So right now, my, Salix, my version of Salix isn't very informed. So we'll see that it doesn't parse as well as if I'd been running it for a month and it's informed with all of the information that, is, that tends to be on my labels. So you can also see under preferences, you can tell it to learn or you can tell it to not learn. Again, the format. Um, another one that I like to do, uh, you can format for your um, barcode numbers. So if you expect your barcode number to occur in your text, you can tell it that it should be an eight-digit number. So next, finally, to actually parsing a label. So we open the text file. You could otherwise copy-paste, but I like to open the text file because then I know ex exactly from which text file I'm working. One thing I neglected to mention, I've noticed in playing around with Salix that if you make any updates to those um, country lists or plant names or the dictionaries, you want to make sure that the text files that you're working with the OCR text files are in here because wherever are those OCR text files, it's going to update the country list. And if the text files are not in here, it's going to put a country list wherever are your text files and Salix won't learn. So in order for it to learn, make sure everything's in this folder. It's not an ideal structure, but um, that's what we have to do right now. So I neglected to put into that folder all my text files. <coughs> Paste. Come on. OK. So there they are, named with the barcode. So I go back to Salix, and I ask it to open. We'll play with this one. And it'll parse automatically. You don't have to press the button parse, but you can opt to parse again based on any corrections you make in this text field. So this is exactly what it read in the OCR text. You can see it did, didn't read everything well, and actually this is a conversion error, but that's okay. The downside is that you can't see the image at the same time. So if there are any errors in your OCR text, you may want to have a window with your images open at the same time so you can go through and verify that it's captured everything correctly. So you can see here, the red highlights are telling me those are mandatory fields that cannot be left blank. I like to go through the text from top to bottom of label as opposed to around the screen filling in fields. That helps me to verify that I've entered all the data that's on the label regardless of whether or not there's a field, um, regardless of these fields here. 
So the first one I hit is elevation. I see here there's a circa 97 meters. I highlight the text. Somehow it read 13 meters. And I think it's because of this right here. So this is an OCR text error. I can increase the size of the text if that helps everyone. So this interpreted 13 meters elevation, but I know that's incorrect just by context. So I can highlight the text here, click the button, and it'll overwrite whatever was the field, whatever was the information in the field there. If I right click instead, I can overwrite, insert at the beginning, append at the end, etc. So I've got elevation in meters from, then the next thing I see is latitude. Highlight all the characters, doesn't matter from beginning to end. You'll get faster as this, at this as you do it. Um, latitude, longitude, north. Just for fun, I'm going to leave this west blank. We've got, okay, Pinaceae. Did it find Pinaceae? Yes. Did it find Pinus? Yes. Did it find the specific epithet theta? Yes. Great. So I don't need to worry about those fields. And then it shows the string here. The determiner, D etha, did it find it? Yes. Did it find the determination date? Yes. And that's probably because it was prefaced by this DET period. It did not find the country, and I haven't figured out why that is. You can't get more obvious than the United States of America. But I, I, it may be a glitch in mine, and maybe if I do this enough, it'll be more informed. But if it should be blank, then you can search this drop-down list for a controlled dictionary of countries. Hmm? Maybe, maybe because it's not USA. That's why it doesn't see it. So given that I've selected USA, I now, I now have a the limited, or I should have a limited list of states here, but for some reason it's not showing that either. So I'll go over here, find the state in the label, <coughs> put in Texas. I don't like to record higher level geography in the precise locality field, because that's not how we import data to our database, but you, you're free to leave that in there if you want a, a verbatim field of the collection data, of the locality data. So, looking at the label, United States of America, Texas, Harrison County. Harrison is our, or the counties are our t secondary political subdivision. So I select the name, find it in the list, or enter it in there. We've got Herbarium, New York. I've set this by default to be New York all the time. You can set it to whatever you want, and then you don't have to worry about capturing it. The barcode, if it happens to have been captured in the OTR text, you can enter it in there, or I can see it up here as the name of the text file I'm working on. Collector, it did not find, so I'll highlight it. Collector number, that's not the right number because the collection number's here. Date, well here I know is the collection date, but it's incorrect. The OCR output is incorrect, so I'd have to go to the image. and verify what it is. And it's much harder when you're working with full sheets, as you can see, because you have to navigate around the image. So it should be July. So it's not so fast in the beginning. There's some learning both by the user and the program. But it will learn. So... 7.8 kilometers in the center, locality. It read the plant description information really well. 